You wouldn't bloody read about it. JB went for an Andrew Trottinghausen this morning. 12Ks, longest I've ever done. So that's why we're here with a later video. So hopefully it's enough time to get the information you need to potentially make any final trades that you are making heading into you know, the back end here of round 15 as well. I'll uh, show you where everyone's at in that top thousand for anyone who you know, is still following and is somewhere around that sort of top three, four, five thousand. Uh, as we go along through the video, we still don't have the scores in, unfortunately, for the final game of the evening there. Parramatta up against the Roosters there. So I'll get that up for you guys as well as we get through this video. But kicking things off with the Tigers and the Titans, I cannot get a tip to save me life this weekend. Thankfully, I got Roosters. That's it so far. So yeah, I've lost one point on my, the family one's my, you know, my big one that I'm, that I'm worrying about. So yeah, lost one point on that. Not too bad overall. But this this is the frustrating one here. Keanu bloody Keeney, hey? <laughs> I spoke... You know, I copped so much shit at the beginning of the year just for how poor he ended up being. But look like the, the weeks that I had him. He had the buy-in round two. He got picked up an 18 and an 18, running for 96 and 142 meters, right? Across those two games. And it includes two errors, one error. He had these most missed tackles in that game. And then every game after that, like, yeah, granted, the first two weren't incredible and neither was round 14, but both round 12 and 15, he went 80 and 85. I didn't expect that he had that in his game. I did think that he would uh, very easily get to a 40-odd just with base stats. And you did see that in that round 14 one with the 36, which did include, obviously, neg eight there overall. But uh, three line breaks there, obviously, against the Tigers. The Broncos one was very, very impressive, but they aren't playing too great either. So, yeah, just very, very impressive for Keanu Keeney. Obviously, in the winger fullback slot, 432K. If anyone who is out there that does own him, the 7.5% that may have just, you know, still have him from the start, which I've, you know, spoke to a couple of people who are in that boat. Well done to you, that's for sure. But Stefano, what a welcome back game for him after, you know, a couple of lower ones across the last month. Comes back with a bang and, and just really anyone who's bought him now, you can get 40s out of him over the next little you know month of, of games and he's still he's going to roll out with a 50-odd average for you, which is awesome. Uh, with that 81 there, was incredible. Along with Mo Fodawaka, so the two big boys from each team came out and did a great job. So 65 minutes for Mo leading into Origin. This is more of what we expect from him. Not even that high of a score, but those minutes and you know 50s type of range there for fantasy. But both those guys just went... Yeah, absolutely nuclear in this game. Very low on the negatives. Just a one missed tackle between the two of them. No errors, no penalties as well. So really, really strong footy up top from those two. Jojo Fafita was 67. He was on 26 in four minutes and then scored a try not long after. So he was like 42 in, in like 10 minutes or something crazy of what that was. And then uh, slowed down a little bit, but still got you know, involved plenty with the try save, a couple of turnover tackles to go along with his three line breaks. But the big news that we're here for is Jaden Campbell. So I did end up going for Campbell and also Wishart. That's the way I went. I went, uh, yeah, I really wanted to to see the Watson one play out, but I did think that Wishy and Campbell would work out pretty well. And we'll speak about the Storm game in a sec, but they have, after this Warriors game, which they still end up winning well, but that start was, oh, that was tough viewing. I had four, I have four Storm players now, guys, just to, just for a bit of context and they're all I think over across the first six minutes of play I had four players and I was on negative six between the four uh, so that was great I think Bloor was on one and the other guys were on negative so it was pretty pretty hectic that start but what I was getting at there is um yeah I really did want to have Watson in my side but I wasn't super convinced on Fletcher Sharp obviously against the the Panthers into the bye as well and then Armstrong that like they're looks like they're going to keep him. So, you know, does he even get back into this squad? And there's a few little th bits and pieces there. And with Campbell and Wishy both have the ability to go 50 plus and have the big score in them. I thought, you know, both them with low break evens was the play. Personally for my team, yeah, is that I really want a Watson who did well also. He's, he's, I just love watching him, him play. He's incredible. But Campbell, he's, he's still very clearly on one leg. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him going forward. Had a great game. He was 61 points and just had the four in negatives. Defended really well. I was happy with his defense. Obviously, 18 tackles for one miss. Last week was 15 for three. So he was good on that front. He actually had more kick meters than Kieran Foran. Kick goals, obviously, and he had, you know, got to kick the one there uh, out of, you know, kick one from two. 
And the first one was really, really good. And then he, yeah, he missed the second one, which was a little bit closer actually. But he had two forced dropouts and he had a great 40-20, which he looked like he did with ease. So that were three very impressive kicks there. And obviously, yeah, that shows a good a good half there to be able to do that stuff. So I'm not sure what they're going to do. You know, Foran had his moments. He had that line break, which, you know, Campbell got that try from, which was great. But he also, yeah, and he also digs into line very well and, and helps out that way. But maybe Campbell offers a little bit more. Like, do they go Brimson and Brimson at fullback with Kenny and how he's playing? I do think they probably still will just go Brimson back to fullback and then Kenny either goes into 14 or he misses the side. But it will be interesting what happens. And Campbell, well, I'm definitely worried about his knee. Obviously, how heavily strapped it is. And he doesn't look like he's free-flowing when he runs at the moment. But he's still playing incredibly well. Obviously, kicking in general play, he's still going to get his good run meters like he does at fullback, kicking goals, and then he gets tackle numbers as well. So I'm very happy with him at six at the moment. It looks like he accumulates really easily. And I'm, I'm very happy with that as an owner him of him to get a 61 out of there following his 57 last week, which I didn't get, but, you know, 61 here at 519. Absolutely incredible, exactly what you want. Whereas you look at Watson, obviously 780K, he's priced at 56. So him getting at 63 last night, obviously, you know, is above where he's priced at and he had a 30-odd break even. But when you're looking at price to, to points value, Campbell worked out better. And we'll have to see how Sharp ends up tonight as to if he, um, if he outdoes Wishard, who you know, wasn't as good. But anyway... That is that that game was a, a strange one for the storm anyway. Alex Safarth, very, very terrific work off the bench, like fifty-four and fifty-eight minutes. He was great. I was very worried about Samuel Lafinu early on in the game and thankfully he turned that around as well. But Safarth just doing great things off the bench. Hopefully he still I imagine he still play, play, played him there. I doubt there was many pl- people out there that had seventeen on the park and sorry for not being able to speak at points during this video. I'm pretty tired. I'm ready for a little Lie down on the couch, that's for sure. But Phil Sami with a 51 there. 25 tackles for one miss. It's pretty impressive for a, a guy that's been out for a few weeks as well, along with Brian Kelly. One line break, seven tackle breaks, a couple offloads there. Doing some good things, but uh, they were able to keep him fairly nullified on that left-hand side, like Campbell was giving him early ball. And yeah, he wasn't able to get through apart from that one there um, in that second half, I believe. Olam, gee, they terrorized him down the left-hand side earlier on in that game but he still end up with that 48 with two tries, a try saver as well uh, with one line break. So yeah, end up with a pretty good score. Fantasy wise, Fanua Bole with a nice try there off Coruscant to finish off that game and get the win. So congrats to Tigers. I, I tipped the Titans in this one as well. And yeah, I don't know how they end up losing. Obviously, yeah, the power of the crowd and how good the um, you know, Tigers play at Leichhardt compared to others. And obviously it's a bottom, bottom of the table clash. So yeah, that was that. Coruscant picked up that try assist, but yes, the 10 missed tackles in the era. They really just butchers his score on a week-to-week basis. Like, you know, yes, he played seven, kicked a little bit, ran, you know, 82 meters, had two turnover tackles, thank goodness. Otherwise, he would have been a very, very low score there, unfortunately. McLeese Haas there with 43 in his 64 minutes. So, yeah, he looks like he actually gets involved and does a lot more than kind of what his score suggests sometimes with those minutes. But, you know, 10 in negatives probably hurt him a little bit for sure. But, yeah, 43 at 542K is, uh, yeah, it's a win for sure at dual position and plays round 19. And yeah, there's some good things in there for sure. Kieran Foran with 42, like I said, did some good things. Obviously a couple of line break assists, made a good amount of tackles, but two errors and seven missed tackles. Not super ideal. And you want to grab both for more with a 40 in that one was was solid enough. And what about Ruben Porter? I ended up playing 70 minutes, which was absolutely wild how that how that one played out for sure. But um, yeah, got 40, so good stuff for him in... Was it his first game or was he... Yeah, it might have been his first game. Was it? They had three games of experience off the bench. <laughs> that was all. So a lot of guys on debut. Uh, Sammy Weller, 39. So yeah, it just wasn't working out for him in that first half. Like Hardly was getting the ball. Thankfully, it sounded like Aiden Caesar had a bit of a chat to him at halftime from what Lara Pitt was saying there. And he, yeah, really turned that on and ran harder and, and did some good things. And obviously got that line break try assist, which was awesome. Exactly what we needed from a guy at 502K. 49 last week into a 39. I'm very, very happy with that. Overall, his brother there, Sione, with a 36. Caesars 38, Verrill's 38. Not too bad there for those two. Bullo with 35, just kind of just, yeah, just hanging around this 35 average exactly there. Aaron Clark with 31 and his 38. You would hope for a few more minutes with Fafita out. But again, just continue to use him as that impact guy. Hopefully he helps you out next week, either in the mids or in the hooker. But outside of that, 
you probably hold him for around 19, to be fair, too, with how tough that position is there. Jacob Alec with uh, 28 there in, in 57 minutes. He ended up playing, yeah, big minutes there. Pahulu with 36 minutes. Palacia with 29 minutes. Naden picked up a 24 along with uh, Charlie Staines. But De Silva, they ended up moving Appy back into nine after that 53 minutes. So, yeah, he was kind of a little bit of a turnstile, a little bit of a, you know, they're running over him, which we saw in those New South Wales Cup stats, how many missed tackles he'd been making. So when you take that jump up to, you know, NRL level, it, the, the tackling's only going to get harder. So, yeah, that made sense and was a good good play to obviously leave him out of your side. Congrats to Jacob Miller for his debut. Heath Mason as well. Really, really impressive for him. I think that's correct because De Silva had played a few games, hadn't he? Yeah. Yeah. There were more than three games then. I think he played more than three games off the bench. Anyway, but debuts for the, all three of those guys. And uh, Mason looked really good when he came on and, and moved into the halves then. Covered for Appy, who went into nine. So that was cool. Chris Lant, Randall played some lesser minutes, which was which was strange there for sure. But yeah, that was that game. We move on to the Waz and the Storm. And yeah, I tipped the Waz in this one thinking that, yeah, and they played so well at the start and Storm were absolutely diabolical. And then they turned it on and played great. And yeah, the Waz back to old ways, unfortunately. And, you know, yeah, SJ returns and he just didn't look himself, did he? Obviously not kicking goals either. Adam Pompey was, yeah, kicking it really well, to be fair. But yeah, they're just not, they haven't been like since RTS and SJ came out of the side, they played incredibly well and they did fall back into old habits here, unfortunately. And Mitch Barnett, the only one really that's, yeah, Tamari Martin's playing great, but um, the only one of the forwards that's really stood up over this, over these, when they're losing games, I think is more, probably more what I'm getting at. Barnett's been really consistent all year. And for Blake's been good obviously for the majority of the year and in their wins especially but um yeah he was like okay last night 150 meters only making 18 tackles so like just you know doing the dirty work and stuff just not there as much for him there obviously barnett only 25 so yeah they um yeah i suppose they didn't have um to defend as much i suppose and the storm were just kind of scoring from their end a bit and spreading it out to to the wing and stuff like that especially down that right hand side they were going so yeah barnett really really impressive 68 working so hard and He's getting the spoils, so congrats to anyone who bought him this week. Jerome Hughes with four try assists. So I'm very happy that they did give him the bat back try assists off that kick, which was good. I'm a little bit upset about the Wishart one. If anyone can uh, remember the Ethan, Ethan Strange try assist the other night, I think that was less of a try assist than what Wishart had last night. He got far longer outside you know, the center defender, and yeah, it was all in shape. There was a decoy runner in there, and thought that'd be a try assist for sure whereas the Ethan Strange one he basically passed it to I believe it was Hudson Young and he just went through and scored him oh it wasn't even Hudson Young was it whoever it was they gave it out to them and they basically just went over themselves Whitehead no no it wasn't left hand side anyway I think it was Young but yeah go back and I want to go back and watch that again I think you guys should as well let me know what you think on that because I thought that Wishart was deserving of a try assist there but yeah we'll get back to him shortly but yeah, Hughes really good with a 58 in the end after, yeah, lots of missed tackles, a couple of errors, a few like accidental stuff, like one of off Grant, they like Meany, I think, I don't know if Meany ended up getting that error or not. What did they say there? Yeah, Meany's got no error. So he like offloaded out the back straight into Grant's knee, who was right behind him, and there was no chance of him catching it. And like Grant gets the error from it. So a few things like that, a few easy like missed tackles from Hughes, from Grant, these types of guys here. But something to note, actually, which we'll get down to in once we get down there a little bit further, but we've had a big um, change, obviously, in these in these points. We'll get to in a sec, but like Bloor was 34 down to 32. Grant was, what was he, 30, 32 down to 29. And then we had them back up. So Grant's gone away back up to 40. I'll see if it's still there, but in the NRL app, Grant's all the way back up to 40, which is awesome, at least. And then Bloor's gone up to Bloor's gone up to 37. So yeah, that's much better because it was looking pretty dire for my for my squad there, having four storm players, that's for sure. But they seem to be the only couple that really have have bumped up. But yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. Far longer with 57. Very, very impressive. Yeah, Hughes 58. We'll take that for sure. As an owner, 57 for, for Sua. With that awesome try at the end, the other one where he winded himself, hilarious. Um, yeah, you do those big jumps, mate. You <laughs> you need to get up and just walk away because you, you can't be you can't be doing that. That's for sure. Uh, that's Sua. 
really, really good score. You'll get him hopefully for next week and then Pap returns in 17. I think that works for everyone. To be fair, I'm happy to see Pap back. Sua might end up on a wing for like a Xavier Coates getting rested or something like that. Adam Fennell Blake with 51, still a solid score. You would have hoped for a little bit more, obviously priced higher than that, but uh, yeah, ended up fine to be fair after, yeah, kind of a slower start, 26 or whatever it was. We had Eli Katoa with 50. To get 50 with a try and a, a try line break and a try assist is pretty upsetting just because of the 18 in the negatives and surprisingly had no tackle breaks, no offloads. So there's a few times he like got lots of post-contact meters, but no tackle breaks and offloads. So 50, not the end of the world. Like it's almost where he's priced at, but um, with those attacking stats, you'd hope for a 60, 70 type game. And then he can have his low, lower games like last week where he gets 40 odd in just base only. So there you go. Adam Pompey with 50 uh, score tries, set up one as well. So yeah, it'd be hard to drop him for, for um, I was going to say for chance for, for Roger. But yeah, I think after that loss, they probably need to. They yeah, down that left-hand side defensively weren't incredible at all. So yeah, that'll, that'll hurt him. Jackson Ford playing in the middle, uh, you know, big change from him. 48 in 66 minutes. So really, really good. Tohu Harris, 44 minutes. So his minutes have dropped down heavily. And thank goodness he's got a nice PPM. He was my vice um, in the head-to-head team, which meant he ended up being captain, which is pretty frustrating there as well. Obviously, when he got moved back to the bench, but it is you know how it's been playing out, unfortunately. So that was that. You had Nick Meany with his 42 with a try, a line break there, five goals. So did well on that front. But yeah, still missing tackles, still not defending great out in the centers. So... There's that, but still for, yeah, two forced dropouts in there as well, and they got the win, so can't complain too much there. Liero, 42. Walker and Tamari Martin, 41 each. Pretty solid there. Yeah, Tamari's still doing a great job. Obviously, less kicking in general play, but did have a fair bit of control in this game. They've just got to sort out how to get wins, though, with, with SJ in the team right now. And, uh, yeah, and Tamari together. Chance with 39. Had a try assist there. Not a lot in the negative side, which saved his score because it, you know, it was 159 meters, not you know 220 plus. Wade Egan, 34, super frustrating with that scenario right now, with him, um, just not scoring well enough, down to a 40.7 average for the year, and yeah, I suppose with how Grant scored in this game, he ended up getting yeah, a slight improvement, but yeah, not good at all. Let's go to Grant first because he is higher on the point scoring than that of Bloor, but 29. They had him at seven missed tackles and they've dropped him back to four. A lot of them was like he was first contact and they, you know, he hit and kind of went back like a meter, like he, and then got back in and tackled. And I, I, I don't think that they're, that they should be bust because it's like, well, you made like a quarter of an extra, you know, half an extra meter or something like that as the other guys were coming in and it was fine. So they did drop those off, which was nice. And did he go up in tackles? He went up from, yeah, so they ended up giving him tackles for that. He got 36 tackles for four misses compared to 31 for seven. So that's five extra on that side. And yeah, so 11 extra points just in tackles, which is a massive difference there. Nothing else really changed. 34 on the kick meters, 28 on the run meters. Yeah, so nothing else changed apart from those tackle numbers there, which was very, very ideal. But uh, he's just had an off season, hasn't he? Down 107K, it's going to be way lower after this one there, unfortunately for him, he's gone, yeah, 38 and backing up into a 40. So he'll be, yeah, 660K and people will be snapping him up for so cheap after the, the buy period if they want him to. Like Hooker's just an absolute graveyard. It's so bad right now, apart from Damien Cook, who I didn't jump on. But yeah, that's that. Uh, wish up. We'll go to him next, 34. I think did pretty well to get out of, he was on one after like 20 odd minutes. Uh, Harry Graham was two after 30 minutes, three after like 37 minutes or something. It was absolutely gross. I think he ended up getting a turnover tackle or something like that. What did he get? Offload. Try saver. He got that try saver maybe just before half time or just after, which is kind of, yeah, then he was in like, no, he was in like 20 at like 50 odd minutes. And you're like, okay, maybe you can get like 30 odd bit. Yeah, horrendous. That's for sure. We shot. After being one after 20 or something like that, well, it wasn't the end of the world. We'll take the 34. It's still a price rise. And like I was mentioning, guys, their, their run over the next bunch of weeks is absolutely terrific. They've got, for a team that scores a lot of points, Dolphins, Raiders, Tigers, before they're buying 19. And then, yeah, we'll work it out from there. And yeah, I just thought he was a, a good purchase just based on that alone. And, and the negative, you know, the cheap break, low break even there was very helpful. Glory up to a 37. Thank goodness for that. He's just been a tough watch. Thankfully for him, he got a lot in tackles in this one. They gave him, 
one extra tackle and one less miss. So there's three points there, which is helpful. Um, what else did he get? Da -da -da. 61 tackle break. Error? Yeah, he somehow, for some reason he had an error. So they got rid of that, thank goodness. Yeah, so there you go. That were the extra points up to 37. Yeah, that's right. He didn't have an error. So, okay. That makes more sense. So they just had the stats wrong from last night. So that's that with him up to 37. It's just been pretty average and obviously scored closer to where he's priced at at least. So can't complain too much on that front. Johnson with 30. Is that where he, they kept him at? 30. Yep. 30 there. Yeah. Not a great game, to be honest with you. He didn't look great out there. A couple of errors, three missed tackles, low kick meters, low run meters. Tackle numbers are good, but outside of that. And not kicking goals as well. I wouldn't be buying him. And if you own him, just stick solid, but needs to improve, that's for sure. Nick Kure, almost had a try there. He looked, you know, still looks great when he runs a footy. But um, yeah, low score from all of these guys from here on in. Anderson, 25, picked up a try as well with that. King getting cheaper and cheaper as we go along. If there's an injury to like a Trent Liero, I think that he becomes viable. Welch low, 23 minutes. Howarth, 22 and 29. So welcome back to him. He was fine. Jastavanga copped a bit of a knock there too. Uh, Iromeo with 14. Dallin, 11. Obviously, a, yeah, uh, Simbin as well, but 11 in 70 minutes. Gross. He's going to be so cheap. And then Chanel played uh, nine minutes for 10. Joe, Tan, Joe Chan, there eight there for 24 points. So just checking here that they haven't updated it in the meantime. No. We still have Daniel Tupo with his try scoring. So anyone who got actual points in the game have uh, their points up there and that's it. All the rest you've got like, because it had them as zero, I think that's got them as like red dots and they didn't play like Teddy and all the like. So they're not even on the list right now. So let's move over to that game there just to, to go through those stats for sure. I've got a couple of people in the private group asking where the recap video is. Sorry guys, it's later today. That's for sure. Uh, Adam Fennell Blake. Did, I just notice, did that just change too? Adam Fennell Blake down to 49. There you go. 49 in the end, so four tackle breaks, two offloads. Maybe they had him at, oh, they had him at five, didn't they? So they took away a tackle break. All the rest kind of looks the same. Anywho, Eels and the Roosters. So Roosters got the win in this one. A solid performance in the end. Eels just can't find a win at the moment. But yeah, Connor Watson with top fantasy points, 63 for him, 47 uh, tackles on that front. Brendan Hands making 35 and had a really good game, to be fair. Cartwright came on and absolutely dominated too, trying to do his best to, to get a win out there. Yeah, Blaze Talangi with a couple of uh, line breaks and Will Penasini with a 77. So very, very impressive from him. So yeah, 77 for, for Will. 35 for Gutho there on that one. Blaze Talangi with a 28 with two line breaks. Pretty tough. Dylan Brown got a try there for 53. Mitch Moses for 55. So again, those selling Brown, it's just an absolute mistake. I know like he's got some tries in recent history to kind of prop him up, but... Like, it was a green dot this week as well. And he's around 19 half, and it just seems like a mistake. But yeah, another good score from him to go along with basically where he's priced at now. Will Penasini's just dominating. He had big tackle numbers, 177 run meters, a try assist, two line break assist, nine tackle breaks. As I said, good tackle numbers as well, 27 for three. Very, very good there for uh, Will Penasini with an intercept there as well. So good stuff there on that front. Russell was low. We had Moe's 55, as I said, was pretty solid. Brendan Hands 42. You take that every day of the week at his price point. Has the buy next week, but um, yeah, they're definitely playing better with him and he's a bit more crafty for sure. And, you know, Lusty came on for 14 minutes. Of course, he he got, you know, back onto that bench somehow with you know, whoever they end up losing on game day. There's always someone. But Madison came back and played, surprisingly, but they still end up having Lusty there on the bench in that final hour before team list. Obviously, um, with Hopgood out there for sure. Junior had 50. Kelma had 26 with the sin bins. That was frustrating for owners of him. Definitely not what you wanted there for sure. I'll actually, um, what's it, 12.59. So I'll actually be able to see the final team list of that first game with you on here as well. So may as well chuck that on there. Attack it on at the end. But Bryce Cartwright was 62 off the bench. They moved so much. They had Lane starting, Cartwright off the bench, Maddo off the bench. Um, Junior Paula, you know, changing there as always. But yeah, Cardi worked, it worked out a treat that he came off the bench and Got so many offloads there. I think it was six offloads or something stupid. Dejan Asi played a lot of minutes here for three. Unfortunately, Sean Lane, 35 in the start. Maddo, 41, if anyone's still holding on to him. So that was the, the big news on that front. And then some good scores 
from Tedesco, 61 for him. That was really nice with a couple of try assists there. Daniel Tupo continuing to do good things. And uh, I was looking, actually looking at him as like a cheaper... Damn, I should have done it. I was looking at him as a cheaper um, super coach buy in my head-to-head. I was like, oh, I can get rid of Armstrong and have a bit of a play at um, yeah, trying to get the win in my head-to-head comp there. And I decided to leave it. Campbell was the other one I looked at. They both got big scores, obviously, which are uh, frustrating. But um, yeah, here's what it is. Power good with the try. Manu with 33. So it's a couple of low ones. Yeah, low one at fullback, low one there. Unfortunately for Manu after a couple of weeks off, so that's not ideal. Obviously, Walker there with a 30 as well. So both those guys, you hold you hold them for obviously for round 14 there, and then they produce this. So obviously, they'll both be good scorers next week, most likely, but super frustrating there. Don't sell them. But Walker, that makes more sense for him to get a random 30, but Manu... Not as much. Yes, the center, like this year, he's been super consistent. Previous years, you'd see a 30-odd from him, and like that's fine because we'll get a 60 the next week. But yeah, super frustrating there. For owners, not much you can do. Connor Watson with 63, all in base. He had three tackle breaks, good run meters, 47 tackles. He's a special player, obviously, with the odd turnover tackle, I believe they ended up with. Not sure there. I don't think they'll show it on here. But yeah, really good from him. Lindsey Collins, 59 minutes. So yeah, getting a good stint before Origin there, which meant that Terrell May got some lower minutes. It meant that Nafahu White got a few lower minutes as well, which yeah, was what it was. 37 minutes for him. Angus Crichton, lots of negatives in this one, but thankfully got some attacking stats for owners of him. I kept him in Supercoach, thankfully. So that was a win that way. And uh, I suppose it didn't hurt me in fantasy. Like he didn't go 70-80 like he has in previous games. He's missing a lot of tackles like he did in Origin too. Missed a lot of tackles, and he wasn't doing that before in that month where he was absolutely dominating. Victor Radley with a 56 worked out well for him. Nafahu White, any owners or buyers of him, got a 38. At his price, he will get bigger minutes next week. Same with Terrell May, so keep hold of them. Sam Smith didn't get on the park. Of course, he didn't. Connor Watson just goes the 80, and uh, it was a fairly close game, obviously. Spencer Lenu with 41. Butcher with 47. As I said, if you're holding Terrell, 21 is not the end of the world. Well, it's not great, but next week you should get a big score out of him and, and people will probably captain him next week and he'll start and go well. So keep that in mind. And yeah, we'll leave that there. Let's go into, now that we are on NRL.com, let's go in and get those final team lists. Jackie Boy, Jaden Sewer. All righty, where are we at? Let's see. We have Garrick, yay. Uh, nothing changes there. Lee, I hope Whitey. Jake Simkin into the starting nine jersey. Welcome in, Simkin. And then you've got Sipley in the start. He hasn't been very good this year, has he? Lawton goes to bench along with Nathan Brown, Corey Waddell, Ethan Bullymore with Blake Laurie, Raymond Vitale Mariner, Ben Murdoch and Silla and Toby Couchman on the bench for the Dragons. Eisenhuth starting in the middle 13 role, hopefully for owners of him. He gets good uh, good points, good minutes. Jack DeBellin in there in the 10 jersey as well. And fantasy's a little bit weird. Obviously at the moment this week with, uh, yeah, that game, you know, you go into that, obviously Eels and Roosters game and no scores are in there. I didn't have any players, so... I'm expecting a big dropping drop in rankings, but I'm into 617, which looks pretty good for now. I do only have two players today, I believe, with Brayley and who am I missing? Brayley and Garrick, obviously there. So yeah, really happy with like Campbell and Drinkwater down below. Husey at 58, Cotter with 65, Plathy with 53. Yeah, some decent scores in amongst some crap. Obviously my captain see the vice of of Aiken. He had Wishart's 34, Blory's well thankfully 37, and, and Grant's 29. That'll go up to a 40. So maybe. With those updates there from those two, that'll help me out with not losing too many ranks. And I think having 16 this week is what I've ended up with. I'll um yeah, I probably won't go too bad. Hopefully can make a few ranks sit around like the thousand mark or so, but there's still a few play people today having captaincies on Isaiah Yo and these types of players. So yeah, good luck everyone for those games. Hopefully you can you have watched this beforehand, or if not, watch it throughout the rest of the day. And good luck tonight and uh this afternoon, and we'll see you in the next video.